Hey guys, here for another HVAC video going over an issue I see a lot in the field where they don't wire up the American Standard Train TEM6 air handler um, when paired with a proprietary 824-724 thermostat. So these two pieces of equipment, they do get wired up different compared to like a conventional Honeywell or Pro stat. Um, and the instructions are actually in this manual here that you follow for it, which people don't open those up. You know, those are the, the kneeling pad that you sit on in the attic or whatever. So we're going to go look at the instructions. We're going to wire it up the way it's supposed to be. And remember that this is a custom air handler. It's not set up from the factory, so you do have to program dip switches and do a couple different things. It depends on what thermostat you're using. Again, if it's one of the proprietary ones or if it's a generic Honeywell. And uh, specifically, I'm going to go over the ones with this thermostat because that's what I'll be installing now. So let's take a look at the wiring first. So usually the confusion starts with you get so many different wiring diagrams because they give you one for the air handler, they give you one for the outdoor unit, they give you one for the thermostat, and you don't know which manual or which diagram to use. Well, if you're using a generic thermostat, use the one that comes with the air handler. If you're using a proprietary thermostat, use the manual that comes with that thermostat. So one, you need to know what equipment you're working with. In this case, I have a single stage heat pump, the TEM6 variable speed air handler. So this is the diagram that I'm gonna use. I think there's like 33 diagrams in this particular manual. So I'm using diagram 26 in my case. I like to look at the notes first. This one says to remove the factory installed BK jumper. So most of us, when we think of a jumper, we think of a jumper on a board. You know, one of the little standoffs that you cut with your pliers. In this case, it's actually a wire. You can see this red wire right here that I clipped. That is the BK jumper, red with a white stripe. It's the second wire from the top of this plug. So you got your brown or your white with your black stripe, which is actually the BK wire. Then the red with the white stripe is the BK jumper. So that is note one, and I have done that. Note two says do not connect the X2 when using this controller. That's simply because this thermostat is smart enough to know that when you're in heat pump mode, you don't have the O wire energize. Whenever the outdoor unit senses that it needs to go into defrost, it sends the O signal back. Whenever it goes back to that thermostat, it recognizes, hey, I got a call for defrost now. I'm going to run my electric heat. I'm going to fire it off that way instead of the defrost board back, back feeding the O and the X2. You're only doing the O in this case, so you don't need the X2. That may be beneficial for people that don't have enough conductors to run this. So in my case, I'm not going to use the X2. That's that's fine. And then it says Y2 connection at the outdoor unit only required for a two-stage unit. In this case, I have a single-stage unit. I don't need to follow that, but what I do need to look at is this. So my Y1 and Y2, if you look at the comfort controller, it goes through and down to the condenser. It doesn't actually land on the Y1, Y2 here. If you were using a regular thermostat, look at this manual here, your Y is going to your thermostat, or your uh, air handler rather. So in this case, my thermostat's going to send the fan command through the BK wire from the thermostat to the air handler. It doesn't need to know if it's getting a Y1 or a Y2 call in this this instance. So it's going to control the fan through BK and the G signal itself. So don't hook up those conductors. And that is why I go, I went ahead and I put my blue caps on my two yellow wires here because I'm not going to be using those. So they're capped off. I'm only going to use the other wires in this bundle here for my controls. So that's how you do the wiring. Remember, no yellow wires are going to land on these bundles. Cut your jumper adjust your dip switches. That'll be the next thing we need to go over. So let's look at the dip switches. We've got eight to work with. I like doing the five and six first, which is that fan delay, just because it comes up first in the manual. So from the factory, it's set for a minute and a half fan off delay, which I don't want. I want to remove all the delay. I want to set my delays up in my thermostat. I want to custom um, customize it. So I'm going to move it from the on off to off off on five and six. Let's go over here, look at the therm or the uh, dip switches, five and six, uh, off and off. Those are the five and six right there, off and off. Next thing I want to do is look at my cooling and heating airflow. So I find my unit in here, TM6, two ton, wet coil. Notice the factory default is set up for right here, two and a half tons at normal or normal airflow. 
This is why you got to change your dip switches. Not all of them are going to be set from the factory how you want it. In this case, I'm going to run about 400 CFMs per ton at two tons. I could go a little bit lower, do a little bit more dehumidifying, but I'm going to let the BK circuit, the thermostat and the, the blower decide that. So I'm going to set it up for normal. So my dip switches here should be off, on, off, off, one through four. Off, on, off, off. So I've got those set up now. One through six is done. I just have seven, eight left. So just a quick note on here, static pressure. Nice thing about the variable speed unit, it's going to try to overcome static pressure to satisfy the airflow requirement. Around here, usually I'm going to see about 0.7 static on my duct. Now this is just a guess. You don't know that until you put a meter on it and determine it. I have to have the unit running to determine what my static pressure is. So if I use that based off of my airflow settings, I'm probably going to be pushing about 735 CFM. Notice as the static pressure increases, the CFM decreases, but the blower wattage or power consumption increases too. So the less static, the less resistance on the unit, on the blower, the more airflow you're going to get at less power. So that's why it's real important to have good airflow. Make sure your filters are clean, coils are clean, ductwork size adequately. And again, you have to verify. You have to put a meter on the duct system while it's running to determine what your static pressure is. So enough of that. We're done with those dip switches. The last thing we have to do is the electric heat. So in my case, I have 8KWs of electric heat in here. So I find my air handler again, I have a heat pump. This is going to tell me the minimum amount of airflow to go across the electric heat coils. Too much and it doesn't feel like it's heating the house, you know, it kind of gets drafty. Too little and you could pop thermal fuses on it, you know, the auto resets or even the, the uh, manual resets. So I found my 8KW, it tells me 780 CFM is the minimum amount of air to run across that electric heat coil. Now I need to figure out what setting I need to put that at to meet the 780. Next page, again find my air handler, and then I'm going to look for that minimum setting. I'm like right on the money here, 781. So that is my minimal airflow if I put it on medium high. So that's going to be on off on 7 and 8, so let's check that out. Um, and I am already on it. So that one was set from the factory, I didn't have to change it. So again, you have to go over all the dip switch settings, make sure it's set for your particular environment. So now that you've got everything installed, units in the closet, and you power up your thermostat, you need to do the last step to making this variable speed blower communicate with the thermostat. And so that's going over the settings. I'm in the installer setup right now. And notice on the indoor blower type, it says variable on it. That's very important when you're using the TM6 with the BK wire that tells the thermostat that it's a variable speed blower and then if you send the signal through the BK wire to the air handler it's going to respond like your your command is. So that's set up for variable. Um, we'll go to the next group and look at a couple other things. Compressor cycles per hour, outdoor temp sensor, uh, that's maintenance stuff, accessories. Here's a couple different things you can change on here now that you have the um, BK set up, the variable speed blower. Dehumidification is enabled. I've got mine set to overcool by two degrees, which is a nice feature. Uh, smart continuous fan is enabled. What that is, is if the humidity is higher than what the room temperature or the uh, humidity command is, it won't allow the homeowner to run the fan uh, because running the blower is going to add humidity to the structure. So this disables the fan from operating in continuous operation if the humidity is higher than what the set point is. So I like turning that one on. Here's where you can go in and do your custom delays now, the blower delays. If you remember, I turned all of them off at the air handler itself, and now I can modify it here. So I've got my blower on delay and enhanced mode cooling, and then off delay, I run it for a minute and a half at 50% airflow. And you can get in there and can change all sorts of stuff if you want to. Um, heating, I've got it all on no delay right now. So. That's how you can customize your on and off delays for cooling and heating with this particular thermostat. Um, and then these are just lockouts, which I haven't done anything to. So remember, those are the things that you have to do to set up this unit. Cut your, your BK jumper, 
don't hook up your Y wires and then program your thermostat for the uh, time delays that you want. So hope this video helped setting up your TM6 with your BK thermostat. Next thing I'll do is I'll do a video on checking static pressure so you can confirm what you have is what you want based off of your static pressure and your CFM. So that'll be the next video. All right. Have a good one, guys.